Hi, Scrappy friends. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another video in our 12 days of Christmas scrapbooking series where we're taking the Creative Memories 110 scrapbooking ideas and sketchbook. We're going through and taking these sketches and creating 12 double page layouts to help us conquer all of our scrapbooking for the holiday season. Today we are jumping over to page 109 and it's this sketch right here. And yes, this is already a double page spread. We're doing a couple of them in the book throughout this series that are already double pages. And in this case, I like to keep it pretty traditional to the sketch since the double page is already done for us. Maybe just some minor, minor tweaks here and there. Okay, so let me pop this up on the screen and we'll go over it really quickly. Okay, so let's look at the sketch. If you look at the left-hand side of the sketch, all they really did was take that sketch and then turn it upside down and put it as the second page. And that's always a great idea if you have a single page sketch, but you wanna make it into a two page, just turn it upside down, turn it to the side, turn it somehow, make a mirror image of it on the right hand side and then voila, you have a second page. So that's all they did here. So let's look at just the left hand side. At the top, it looks as though they probably have a solid color cardstock as the background piece and then they just matted some photos and trimmed some photos so it would fit in that space. Then for the center section, there's a big chunk of pattern paper, probably about a good six inches of pattern paper. And then at the bottom, there's a second piece of pattern paper, which is only about one and a half inches. And then there's a border strip running across the seam between those two pieces of pattern paper. So it's a very easy layout, one that we can use over and over again and keep changing up the theme and the papers, the border strips, and we would create a whole new page could fit a lot of photos on here. They, they have three on the left-hand side, but you can see you can easily put a fourth one in the box that they use for their title page. Okay, then on the left-hand side, they have four, and again, where they have the journaling spot, you can add a smaller cropped photo. So come on back to my desk and I'll show you what papers I'm gonna use today. So I'm going to use from the Seasonal Sightings paper pack, I'm going to use this beautiful cardinal paper. I think it's so beautiful, I've been waiting for just the right layout, and I think this one's gonna be it today. And then I'm also going to bring in some of this green spotted paper. I'll be using this probably to map my photos. Then I have this amazing, beautiful striped paper. This was from the Shades of Seasonal Sightings pack. Okay, then I really liked the inspiration that they gave us in the sketch to use dark background pages. So I thought, yeah, I'm gonna be a little different today. I'm gonna pull in some black cardstock as my background for my layouts. I haven't used black as a background for a while, so I'm very happy to bring that back in and use that as my background for today. So today I'll build both backgrounds at the same time because they're very, because one's gonna be a mirror image and then turned upside down. So I'm also going to bring in my mats for lining so I can line everything up as we go. Okay, I'll scoot those out of the way so I can bring in my trimmer and my paper. I'm gonna start with the striped paper. And my red is gonna be what they used in the inspiration as the gray stripe. So I'm gonna do a one and a half inch cut. And it will go at the bottom of one page. And then at the top, I know you can't see that, but at the top, I'll bring it down in a moment of the second page. Then I'll take the cardinal paper, and this is a directional piece, so I know that I want it running horizontally. And I'm just gonna cut this one right in half and give each side a six inch cut. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it because when it's done cutting, I want it to, the birds to be facing the right direction. Okay. 
And then let me bring slide these mats back down so I can give you a better view. Okay. And then the cardinal piece will go right onto here. And then on the right hand page, it will go over here. And there we go. That's our basic page layout for today's two page spread. Now for the photo mats that are gonna rest in the black area, I'm gonna bring my trimmer in one more time. And I think that's gonna be about a four and a half inch area we have left because we have six inches here, an inch and a half here, that would leave us with four and a half inches. So I'm gonna cut a four inch strip of paper and this is gonna be the 12 by 12, uh, a 12 by four inch and then I'm gonna turn it and do a five and a half inch. So my mats are gonna be four by five and a half. And then it'll go like that. So that is very beautiful and I just love that black cardstock as my background. So I'm gonna do one more four inch cut. And then these will go right down here. Yep, it just pops off that black paper. Now for my border strip that's gonna run across the seam of the cardinal paper and the red stripe on both the bottom of the left-hand page and the top of the right-hand page, I would like to bring in some kind of leafy vine. And if you had something that is like looks like pine needles, that would be awesome. I even think the bamboo punch would work good for this if you doubled it up and put it like that. Um, if you have older borders, like the holly border or the winter vine border, anything like that you can use down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring in the leafy vine border punch because I happen to have this one out and handy. And I feel like this is a very generic looking leaf that could be used on several diff on any kind of layout. So let's give this a try and see if we like it. I have this piece here from the Lullaby Lane. I have all my scraps are piling up here from uh, the series. And so I happen to have this one left over and it's perfect for Christmas layout. So let's give this a try. I'm going to line it up and punch out two of these. Now what I'm gonna to have to do is once I punch out the second one is I'll have to bring in a little guide to help me guide the paper through because I can see it right now at its mark, but once I cut it, I won't be able to see that again. So I'm gonna put you on fast forward and I'll be right back. Okay, so let's see if we like this. My idea is to just lay it straight across there. So you see how it covers up that seam really nicely. Now let's do the same on the other side. And this paper was just long enough. Yep, I like it. It kind of gives it that garlandy look that we would, we would like to see at Christmas time. So now I think we need to do some more photo mats for the photos that lie in the center of the layout. They show about three photos. They have one, they have two on the right hand side and then one on the left hand side. So I'm going to bring in a piece of scrap paper and let me trim this up. And I'm gonna cut a, a few four inch by four inch photo mats. Okay, let me just line up my paper. Okay, and they have one that goes right about here. And then these two go right about here. You can turn it so that the direction is going all the same if you want but the pictures are gonna cover that up. Now you can also double mat these if you would like. I think for now, um, I'm gonna keep them at four by fours. That way I think I can get a photo to fit here that would be um, a three and three fourths inch photo 
would fit pretty nicely there. And here these I'll just a little bit of repositional adhesive on the back there so that easily be uh, swapped out if I needed to. So I don't have photos for today's layout. I'm going to create this layout as a base page for to get ready for holiday photos that I'm going to take this year. So I feel like I'm using this opportunity to even get ahead in my scrapbooking. I'm not sure what size photos I'm going to have for these blocks yet, but I am going to go ahead and double map them because the, the orangey look of this paper does kind of bring out the body of the cardinal, but I'd like to tone down that orange a little bit. So I'm going to bring in some more red. And again, I will just attach it ever so slightly so that I can remove it later if I change my mind. Okay, so I'm going to cut this one at three. Let me turn it around. I have an uneven cut on the other side. Three and three fourths inches. And this actually is a scrap of some red shimmer, uh, firecracker red shimmer paper. And I did three and a half. Let's try this again. And this time we will do a three and three fourths inch cut instead of three and a half. Give us a little more room for our photo. So that means our photo is gonna have to be about a three and a half inch. Okay. Okay, and then we'll lay it just like that. There we go. So it kind of tones down a lot of the orangey look and it blends very nicely with our cardinals. Okay, so I would like to add a journaling spot and in the sketch they show for two different journaling spots and I don't think I need two. So I'm just going to bring in one and I'm just gonna bring it to the right hand side over here, kind of scoot those those photo placements together. And then this was a journaling card I cut out of a matte card earlier on in this series. And so I'm just gonna bring that back in now and I'm gonna slide it right over here. So, so far I'm staying pretty traditional to the sketch, but I know for sure I don't need two journaling spots off to the side. So maybe I'll be able to add a smaller photo here. But what I would like to bring in is this card. This came from an advisor exclusive embellishment pack. And um, I love what it says about cardinals. Cardinals appear when angels are near. And I love that. Um, I am going to trim it ever so slightly as I feel like there's a lot of extra white space. So I just made it a little bit smaller. I don't want it to be so huge on my page. And I'm gonna put it right about here. That's where they had their card. So it does need to be matted. So I'm gonna bring back in the firecracker red because this one that I miscut actually will be perfect. And that's gonna really help that to pop and stand out on our page. I feel like I could probably get another picture it just depends on how I place these. We probably would have room. Let's see, we could even bring this one down over the border a little bit. We have room for maybe a three by four. So let's go ahead, bring in our orange paper again. And this time we'll do a three. A three by four. And then this one needs to be a two and three fourths by three and three fourths. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Okay, so maybe I wanna bring it in like this. My card is a little bit bigger than theirs. And so maybe we can do something like this and then our other photo like that. So our card is a little bigger than what they have on theirs, but I think we can make this work just by doing some overlapping of some of these photo spots. 
Okay, so let me get all of this adhered down and get it all placed where I want it and then I'll be right back and we'll get ready to do some embellishing. Okay, hold on one moment. Okay, I'm back and everything is adhered down and I kind of played with my photo placement over here on the left hand side a little bit. Okay, now there's one more thing um, on the sketch that I'd like to point out and that's where they used they had a little bit of a border running out here and here from the photos so again you that would be your choice if you even wanted that and or what you would use so you could either use your border punch or your border making cartridge or even just a border sticker but what I decided I wanted to do, and I thought I want to use up some of the items in my stash. So I thought I would bring in this old <laughs> Rick Rack piece. I have several of these left, not so much in green, but I do have several of these left. And so I liked this wavy looking one. I thought I'm going to bring it in and have it tucked running out. If you look in the sketch, they have a little piece running from this to the edge and then again over on this side so let me go ahead and snip that right off at the edge and then over here it's running right along to this photo and i want to go right underneath those cardinals i don't want to cover up too many more of my cardinals because it's getting to the point where you can't see a lot of them. So I want it so that it's just looks almost as if the cardinals are sitting on it. There we go. I'll go back with some wet glue and adhere that down. But that just gives it a little bit more interest to your page by adding a little piece of border. And I think we talked about that in our video before, how you can punch out a chain border and tuck it in. So any kind of chain border would be the same thing here. Okay, but I just happen to have that that rickrack, so why not get it used on a page finally. Let's go ahead and decide where our embellishments are gonna go. And we already have our title, it was very easy because we had the card and our journaling spot is gonna be right there, okay? So where are we going to embellish? I'm gonna just take some advice from the, the sketch and what they have is they have probably the largest one will be right over here around that journaling spot. My next one will be probably right here. It's the same thing they have in the photo. They had some open space available and so, so do I. I have all this white space and so I'm probably going to cluster around right there. And then the last one is they used a spot up here in the photo. Now I have no idea what photo I'm going to use so I don't want to do a huge commitment up there um, if at all but if I do it's probably going to be down here toward the corner and we're going to see about that I might have to just leave the embellishments with this page and come back and make that decision once I see what photo is going to be there and if I don't then I would just have the two embellishment spots on either side and that's okay too we don't always have to do our third one Okay, so let me bring in the tray and I did have to do some reorganizing on my tray because now that I've been doing a few layouts, it got kind of um, hard to find some things. So I kind of just did like items together. So I did tags, small embellishments, medium embellishments, and over here I did word phrases. Let's start with this area. So what I want to do here is I have a piece of this holly leaves and I think I like it because I have all the other um, holly berries that are around on our pattern paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck it right under this photo. Let me lift it up a bit. I just love my multi-purpose tool. <laughs> it comes in so handy and it's going to tuck in something like that. In fact, maybe I'll overlap. If you remember in the inspiration, they had it kind of going up the side too. So there, I kind of like that. Tucked under the mat, just showing the stem of the berries. That's cute. And it kind of extends our mat upward. Takes care of a lot of that white space. 
I also have these little holly berries. Those are super cute, so I wanna kind of bring it out into this white space of the card. And then the last thing I want to bring in for this area is this little present. So let me get some foam tape, because I do wanna pop that up onto some foam tape. And then it would go just like that. So I think that's very cute. I'll position it just ever so slight so that we can still see the leaves and the, some of the berries on the berry on the holly leaf that we put there. Okay, so that'll go there. Then I think what I want to do down here on our leaf, our leafy vine border punch is we have holly berries left on our sticker sheet. So I thought it would be kind of cute if we just kind of sprinkled them through on our leaves just to kind of give it a little bit more of a Christmas flair. And I have exactly six. So I could do three on each side right there. One more on this side. And then I'll do the same thing at the top up here. There we go. So just a little bit of um, extra flair for that border. Nothing huge down there. Over in my journaling spot. So I was getting something out of my outdoor theme box the other day and I, I saw these happy camper stickers in there and I've finished that collection. So I have, um, but I still had these stickers left over. And what I found was I found a couple things that looked Christmassy. There's this pine leaf with some pine cones and this log and uh, this family fun. A couple things that I thought could be used for Christmas. So I thought on my journaling spot, I'm gonna pull this twig because it's pine needles and I have lots of pine needles in my background page paper. So I thought, why not? Why not put it right here? And I am gonna cover up some of that with some powder. That way when I put my photo in, it'll it's not sticky and the photo will slide right in. So I'm gonna do something like this right there at the bottom of that. And you'll see how that's still, a, a photo can slide right in there. You know what, I could take some of these pine cones, I have three, and we can actually put a couple in our, put them down here with our border in fact, I will layer up the little holly berries and the pine cone together right in the center. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll pop up the holly, the little berry, overlap it to the pine cone and put it just like that. I have one pine cone left and I guess I'll just save that for um, another layout. What I want over here is, I think in the pine cones, I kind of would like another cardinal. I like it, even though it's covering up my cluster of pine cones there, I like it. And then I have these little words and this one <laughs> fell off of the sheet. This sheet is not sticky. I don't remember where I got it, but you can see they're, they keep falling off. But this one's pretty cute because it says Merry Christmas. Very, very useful. And I was thinking I could just put it right there under the cardinal. So it would look like that. And I'll have to definitely use a little bit of glue on that one. I want to come back to my sticker sheet really quick. So I saw some of these stars. So I do like the stars. And I kind of like the bigger one. So what, what I'm thinking is, I kind of want to come back down here one more time to the center cluster on this vine and kind of put a star, a pine cone, and a berry in the center of each one. Okay, let me come back up here. 
and grab this one and do that. Yeah, I like that. Again, just a little something. One more area is this area. I think what I want to do is, let's see, I have some die cuts. I do have this little bird house. Let's see, I would want, I don't want it to cover up my carnals, but then again, it, it, I really have to wait and see where else. So I think I'm gonna hold off on putting anything there. I think my lay, if I do anything at all, it might be maybe even a little star, maybe even a little cardinal and a star. That is kind of cute. Let's get a little powder for that. Okay, because that's not too much of a commitment. If I stick that down right there, and then the picture can slide right in there. Just a little something, although I do feel like it needs a little bit of green, maybe a leaf underneath there. So there we go, I'm done, I love it. I think that this is beautiful, it's gonna look so awesome once I get some photos on there. And it's gonna make my scrapbooking for this year so much easier once I take some photos and add it to this page. So I love base pages for that reason. Try and keep your photos as big as possible on there so that you don't have to um, worry so much about getting just the right photo. But I love it, I hope you do too. I, I hope that you were inspired to get some crafting done during this holiday time. And I also hope that you would take a moment to click that like button. It really does help me out and I truly appreciate it. And until next time, take care everybody. Bye-bye.